Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy and today we are going to be drawing or painting rather a lily in watercolor. I have out my what my cover go. Kiritaki um Gansai Tambi watercolors, which I got uh, a couple years ago on Amazon. I don't remember what I paid for them. $50, $40, $50, somewhere in there. Um, they come with the, they come like this with a little plastic cover over the top to protect them and then a swatch sheet that you can use, but this, this paper is super shiny, um, kind of more Bristol paper. So I also created a, a giant swatch. This is in my swatch and palettes playlist if you're interested in being introduced to this palette and watching a swatch video which I find to be super relaxing but that's just me <laughs> um in the description there will be a uh, link so wow words are hard to the line art that I did I scanned this tracing and put it in Photoshop and made a nice line art for you guys so that you can trace it onto your own watercolor paper and paint along with if you want. Or you can put it on with, um, I, sorry, I just realized I still have gum in my mouth. You can put it on with tracing paper. You can put it on the window and trace it that way, however you want. Uh, but I thought for this one, I would offer the line art to go with so that we could paint together. I have um, been researching lilies for a while and decided I really wanted to try my hand at painting one today. So I hope that you guys will paint along with. I have out my, hold on, I'm, oopsie daisy, making a mess. <laughs> uh, my new Velvet Touch Princeton Round Number 10 brush that I got at the craft store. I also have out my go-to Princeton Neptune Round Number 8. And then I went ahead and got out, I don't know where my big wash brush went. Might be out in the living room. So I grabbed out the my 3 4 inch Cat's Tongue Faux Squirrel Zen Art brush. This is a fun brush for uh, painting with. It gets in... Um, you can do big washes with it and it gets in tight areas really nicely. Okay, so, let's chitter, chat, let's, I like to spritz these ones and kind of get them moving a little bit. I haven't used them in a while. Um, and I watched, uh, Lindsay has a new set of the Ganzai Tambi paints that I would love to get. Um, and I was like, well, why are you going to get those when you don't even use the ones you have, lady? <laughs> so, here we are. I'm going to... I just have this taped to a board so that um, hopefully it won't warp too much. Let's put that guy up there. And give it a little spritz. And then I'm going to try to keep this... A little loose, a little free. The um, several reference photos that I have up are these. These particular flowers come in all kinds of colors and um, varieties, like actual different breeds, because they're out there. I don't know. I for some reason did a bunch of research and. Um, decided to I need to move this I got I also have a, a little palette because this doesn't come with a space for mixing and um, I want to be able to mix colors here and there if I feel the need but for right now I'm gonna do a little splattering here and there and then of different colors let's see what else Maybe a little pink. I want this to be fun. If you don't like splattering, don't splatter. You do not have to do this step at all. 
I'm just doing it for me for fun. Um, trying to do a little bit of a background here so that um, my flowers have something other than just the white paper, right? Which there's nothing wrong with. Let me get in there and do a little tint here and there. Maybe a little bit here. This soft purpley color. Now when you put your, if you choose to, trace and paint with. But you don't have to put a background in at all if you don't want to. You can skip ahead. I will, if I remember, try to put in some time stamps so that uh, you guys can skip ahead if you want to. But I wanted a subtle, soft little background for now. Nothing too wild and crazy. There, let's grab a little bit more blue. There we go. Just a little bit here and there. Doesn't have to be a lot. See how it disperses really nicely, and that's going to dry nice and light. So you don't really have to worry too much about get in there and do some little bits of texture here and there. That's pretty, right? Do we like it? A little bit of pink over here. Like that? Okay. Now, I am going to go ahead and do my petals. This one one at a time to start. You can, if you want, do your petals um, all at the same time. I think I want to go in with this really pretty soft ultramarine pale. It's the actual name of the color. I have them written down on my swatch sheet. Um, that's what that looks like, and we're going to just gently plop that on. And I don't remember if this paint moves a lot on the page or not. I don't know if I'm going to need the palette, honestly. There we go. Yeah, that's so pretty. I haven't played with these colors, oh geez, in forever, so I really thought maybe today was a good day. The other petal that I want to be blue is this one over here. I want it to have a bit of a blue background. So I'm just doing that and I'll leave that alone for a second. Come over here and wet this one. And I don't mind that there's a bit of blue still left in the brush. Just go ahead and gently... And this brush has a nice point on it so you can angle it in different directions and really get in there and wet the areas pretty precisely if you want. If you don't want precision here. You don't have to either. You can go with a little bit of carefree willy-nilliness if you want to. Why not? Just drop in the blue around my edges. Thinking blue around my edges. This is going to be very pretty. I'm leaving this little fold right here for a second because I'm going to come back 
and just dampen it and let it be a light blue like that. There's that petal. And I know it looks very pastel right now. As we go, it'll 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 come together, I promise. Um, what else do we want to throw in? Let's maybe do some of this one right here. This is pure ultramarine, just grabbing some on the tip of my brush. While this is still wet, still pretty wet, I'm going to gently, softly come in here and drop in some secondary colors here. See how pretty that is? And it'll do the work for you. You don't have to fuss with it too much. Just let it do what it wants to do. Spread around a bit. Move. Because we're going to come over the top. We're going to come over the top and do more work. But isn't that pretty? Look at that. Natural blooming. Oh, so nice. So nice. I really dig it. Okay. Now let's come down here, leave that one alone, and this petal right here, do the same thing with these other petals that are hanging down right here, like that. That one wet, grab our light ultramarine, just drop it in. And that will help too if you just start with one petal, you won't lose your line work. Now when you're tracing, don't trace too dark if you don't like um, the lines to show up in your painting. I don't really mind that, it doesn't bother me, but um, some people will find it to be distracting. I kind of find it to be interesting. I think it's an interesting element. For the most part though, the way we're doing this, if you trace the line art lightly, you can get in here and drop in color let it be and it'll cover up all the color you drop in will cover up everything that's happening with the line art Got way too much water so just grab tissue here pick up some of it and spread that around there we go there we go we'll grab our darker ultramarine while these are still wet and just kind of splash in a little bit of interest like that because oh look at the textures we're getting oh that's really pretty i dig it now up here I have a purple reference photo up, a pink reference photo, and a blue and yellow reference photo. Each one of the flowers has yellow in it. My yellows are looking pretty muddy. Let's clean that one up. That's the one I want to use too. It's the lemon yellow. But, 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 yellow and green mixed together make or yellow and blue mixed together make green, so you want to be careful. If you get paint in an area you don't want it to be in, or too dark in some area, just give it a little wet, and then take your paper towel or a nice rag and just blot a little. Generally speaking, it will pick up a lot of the uh, mistake that you think you made. It'll, it'll help. There's a fold right here that I don't want to be too dark on either side right there. And then there's a fold on this one that I don't want to be too dark. There we go. Put 
that right back up to the fold. There we go. Nice. All right. Now this bud right here, I'm going to go ahead and put some color on. I'm leaving those alone for right now because I want to put the yellow on. Yellow bleeding up into pale blue, but I don't want it to to mix too much and make green. So I'm going to paint the tip of this bud down to about there, about to the squiggly tracing line, and put our light blue on it. Just to start. Remember these are just our base colors. We're just getting started. A touch of touch of the dark ultramarine over the light ultramarine and they play nicely together it gives us a nice swirly texture I dig that it's pretty I'll take some of that and if you get too much down just blot it a little bit how's that looking just a touch right there. And then a touch of the pail right next to it. There we go. Now it's bleeding and blending around the way I wanted. Okay. <coughs> now up here, a lot of this kind of smooshes together. It's very pale, um, light, yellowy, blue color. So I think I want to use kind of this brighter blue right here, which is horizon blue, which also has a touch of purple on it, but that's all right. We're not going to worry about that. Get that nice and wet. Come over here. We don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to put some water in it. Put that right there. I'm going to come in and, let's see, there's a curl on this petal, so I'm going to put that there, I'm going to put a little bit of it right here, in this section here above this petal, and this section, and then on the top of here. Let it touch if you want, and then along the outside edge of this petal, just gonna give it a. I'm gonna scrub it in a little bit because there's purple on there. And grab a little more. Nice and wet. And come around this direction to about there. There's a little fold right here. I'm going to leave that alone. Right here. It's going to be a little bit lighter. Yeah, I want That's nice. Okay, I'm going to take our light blue again, and I'm going to run it just along this edge right here. Then I'm going to take uh, which way do I want to go? I guess I could do the ultramarine. The darker ultramarine. And plop that in here as well. It does get a little dark down there. For a shadow between this petal situation and that petal situation. Because this one petal right underneath here, between this shape and this this shape. Um, a little too much water on there. Pull that down and over just a bit. Goes all the way up to there and all the way over to there. And we're not there yet. We want that one to be a little bit light. So I'm going to grab my my light blue. And 
and I'm going to put it, let's see, a bit here. And a bit here. I'm just dropping it in the shadowy areas like that. And then I'm going to take my brush, mostly cleaned, tap it off, and gently drag it out so that the color disperses and gets lighter as it goes out here. Most of the pigment stays kind of centralized. And I'm not filling in the whole space. I'm just dragging little bits of the color around to create textures and interest on the white part of the paper. Like that. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Blot that puddle up because it's going to take forever to dry. If you get any puddles then they look a little too big, just blot them gently. See, this is almost dry down here, so we can move down here and refine these pretty quickly. If you've got, once again, too much water somewhere, if a little speckle right there, a little speckle right there, just blot them up. Okay. Now I'm going to take my yellow, right, I might regret this, but I'm going to take my yellow, a little bit of water. Care for that. Maybe we'll use the cadmium yellow. It's a little warmer. See the difference between these two yellows? This one here to this one here. This one's more warm. I like it better. I'm going to come in. We have little like, hairy yellow bits on the petal. It's too much water. And I'm just going to do a little pointillism dot pattern right there. Just right there. Like that. And if it bleeds a little bit, let it bleed a little bit. The colors are bleeding together a bit. Then I want to take water and I don't want to lose track of where I'm at here. There, there. I think, where's my tracing? Yeah. Right up through here. Get this petal a little bit wet. Like that. And it can be yellow, but you don't want your yellow and green to be wet next to each other because they will mix and, or your yellow and blue will mix and make a terribly green color, or a terribly green color, but maybe not a green color you're exactly wanting on your painting. <laughs> and then underneath this petal is yellow as well. So we'll go ahead and block that in, like that. And then you can get this to bleed out as far as you want. Just drag it around a little bit. And then if your watercolor moves around on the page more than mine does, um, just keep that in mind. We're going to come down to this flower down here. and. Kind of between this line right here is our central line for that petal, and this is one big ruffly petal. Um, we're gonna go around these two lines here and kind of stay central, uh, centrally located with our yellow after we wet in our petal all the way over to here and all the way to the edges. I'm going to wet that whole petal. Like that. Down to this petal. And then we're going to take our yellow, our warm cad yellow, 
kind of stay in the middle a little bit with it. Let it bleed, but kind of gently out to the tips. Unless you want your petal to be a bright yellow, then, you know, go for it. You can also make the tips of this petal that pale blue. Just way too much water. Did you see that? Holy buckets. My very pale blue color. And put that at the tip, the little roughly edge of your petal. Being mindful not to actually actively mix the green and yellow to get or the blue and yellow together. But you can come in here and where it's mostly white, drop in some blue. Give it a little blue tint for interest. Let that blue bleed in. It can bleed in. And it's not going to read green because pushing the paints are pushing against each other rather than blending into each other. Now, if you brush the green over the yellow or the yellow over the green or blue, I keep saying green, it will, of course, turn it a little bit green. So go ahead and just here and there, touch the tips of this petal with a little more pure color. We can come down here and gently get in some textures. Working wet on dry instead of wet into wet like we have been up here. Um, layer in some of the softer blue over the top of the ultramarines. Come along the edge of this one because this is that flipped up flipped up folded one right there. Come around the outside edge of it a little bit and then drag some interest lines up some of those veins like that. And you can do the same on this side that's flipped. A little bit of pure color. And then on the outside edge you can put in a little more pure color to differentiate it. And then some little bit of interest to get it little lines like that. Make it pretty. Very pretty. We can do the same thing over here. Just that fold. around the outside edge and then along the bottom line and then pull it up so that it looks like it curled up. It'll make more sense after it dries and we get the dark color in there. Let's put in just a skosh more yellow and maybe a bit of an orange. Do we have an orange? This one is orange. Is it? Yeah, it's cadmium orange. Just a skosh of it. Just a little line there. Touch it there. And then over here, I forgot about our little yellow, orange, let's dab that a bit so we can put some yellow on top in a bit. Put some orange in here, like that. that a bit. Okay, I'll 
grab a little more orange and put it in with this swoop and this swoop and then right in there like that up to there a more more paintless water because there's that little bit of yellow orange there and a little bit of it's kind of like the center of the flower that stamen stuff but on this particular flower it kind of stands up and it's a little bit furry looking like hairy so that's why that's why the uh, weird texture we'll grab pure yellow and drop that on there that. I'm going to blot this a bit, drop in some of that warm yellow as well, there. Cool. Alright. And I do have a very soft This shape here that we traced is a soft petal coming down like that. And it's either behind or in front of this. This one has lots of ruffles, which we're going to come in with our darker paint in a little bit and put in our ruffles. Let's go up here and put in a few more interesting marks like that we have our blue I'm going to come in and put in our shadow colors and all of our ruffle lines in a little bit Alright, this one right here needs to be, it's kind of a folded up um, bud, kind of back behind here. So I'm going to go with pure dark ultramarine. Let's wet that down. And then drop in that ultramarine. Nice and bold. Like that. And this line here, that's another white light petal back there. Light blue. Down here is a dark, another dark bud. So we're going to go in with pure ultramarine. Or purple or blue or whatever you, colors you're using for your flower. And then I think I'd like to actually go in with some purple on top. Now this set has a pretty nice array of purples. I have imperial purple, but they look dark. They look like crazy dark. Oh, we have imperial purple and cobalt violet. And over here we have like this, this kind of purple. I think I'm going to go with imperial and this one and mix them together and make a little different kind, kind of, you know, make it my own little. So it was this one, the Imperial, which is very dark. Clean our brush, and then grab some of our purple purple. Mix those together, need more of this. And it kind of makes like a dark plum color. You can get the same effect with di dioxazine or cobalt as well if you want to go that route but I want to put it on top of my ultramarine not fussing too much just dropping it right on top letting it mix on the page just drop drop that there And then come down on this bud 
and do the same, just kind of skim over the top of that ultramarine and let it sit. Let it, I was going to soak up that dark spot, but maybe it, maybe it is dark there. We'll leave it alone. Let it, let it be dark. Come down here, make this touch that petal right there. Drop in some dark. Here, drop in some dark. And just start creating contrast in your piece by creating our little shadows. Okay, let's put in our stem so we don't get too far ahead with our shadow parts before uh, we get our, our stems in. And I'm going to start with this lime, ooh, it's sticky, lime green right here. Get that moving lime green as a base color for my stem area. I'm going to come up here right up against my yellow and put in my lime green and we're going to put it in go ahead drop it right on like that now these lilies have like these little bits of wispy, papery, it looks like cray paper to me, bits on like on their stem and there's a chunk of it right here in the tracing going up into this bud, but that's still pretty wet. So if you want to paint close to your bud, leave a little white space between your purple, otherwise see it's going to bleed and your green, your green. I'm going to paint right over my cray paper stuff though. Right up to my petal. All of this right here is green and bud and it's got a little cray paper situation happening. If you leave just the barest little white line, you can go back in and fill it in later. That little bit of bleeding doesn't bother me. I think, oh, that's pretty. I'm going to let that happen. Because this is in shadow under here anyways. So let's let that do its thing. I'll dig it. Nice. Maybe we could encourage a little bit of that over here. Maybe. Just a little. Right there. And then put it there. And I'm always playing around when I'm painting, like, oh, that looks nice. Let's see if I can make it happen over here. <laughs> Grab some of our purple, pure purple, and dot it in the wet spots. Like that. Why not? Create some of that cray paper texture that I was talking about. And then I can do a little blotting here on this one. Okay, let's get our lime green and go in and get our other stem in. Right through here right off the page. Like that. Put in a little more lime green. A little more lime green right through here. There. Get up there. my stem and this side of it. Actually the whole stem is kind of dark. There we go. 
See it's starting to starting to lift off the background a little bit and look a little more like a flower. Um, instead of just blobs of bright color. <laughs> Against blobs of bright color. Pick up some of that water. Okay. I think I'd like to put in just a touch of a darker, more earthy green. I'm going to go with sap instead of olive because this has both. This has this sap green and then this even darker like uh, uh, olive green which I think I'm going to go with a brighter sap and drop that direct directly in. Do it. Willy nilly here and there. It's not a bad thing. It'll create interest and texture. See? And then I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to let that be for now. And then I did get a little bit too carried away up here. I'm going to gently pick up with a dry brush where my little cray paper crisscross thing is happening on the here and then come in with my lime kind of fix that a little bit there we go and then we can let that all bleed together be all crazy I like it I dig it Come along the edge of this. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. Because this is my cray papery one right here. Okay. Anybody else digging it? Anyone else liking it? I'm I'm liking it. Alright, so I think I'm gonna switch to this brush, this smaller brush. From my big one. Although I probably could finish this entire painting with just this cat's tongue because it does have such a beautiful point on it. And I have, uh, it's got a nice firmness. It's not too soft and it's not too hard. It has enough give that um, you can use it for the whole painting if you want to. But I'm going to switch down to my, I'm trying to get to know this brush and liking it a lot so far. Uh, my Princeton Velvet Touch number 10. We're going to go ahead and grab our dark ultramarine and mix it with our purple. Let's get some water. Grab quite a bit of that dark ultramarine and mix it with my purple. See that kind of made it a blue purple color. Maybe a touch of this lighter color to soften it a bit. The light ultramarine. There we go, nice purpley, but it's not too dark. It's a nice shadow color, and then we can build from there if we need a darker color later. Because watercolor, you want to go light to dark. You want to start off soft and then build up. So, let's see. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to start with our purple and just the tip, tippy tip of the brush. Um, I actually don't know what my camera is focusing on. We'll have it focus over there. Hopefully we have been in focus this whole time. That would be nice. We are going to go and put in some of the veins and textures in the flower like this. And here's where your tracing lines are going to come in handy. And pop up some reference photos of flower of lilies and use them to influence what you're doing. Put in some texture lines like that. And start to give your your petals a little bit of form and a little bit of shadow. Just 
especially where the, the petal folds over, like that. Right here, and over on this side, I've got a couple bumps. Gently, and maybe get some very light, because remember it looks dark now, but it is going to dry pretty light. So I'm going to go ahead and be bold. I'm going to go ahead and put in some veins and pretty petal textures, just for interest. And you can make this as wild and crazy or tame and as you want. You do what do what makes you what feels right. Do what feels right. I'm gonna come down here. I don't want to hold my brush way down here because then I'm gonna get. I know me. I'm gonna get too wrapped up in details and not stay loose and comfortable. And hold your brush down here. It gives you a little less control. Gives you those wiggly lines like that. If you just slow down a bit where you feel like you need a little more control, I'm going to go on up into my bud and see if I can get some texture lines on my bud as well. There we go. I dig that. Yeah, nice. Let's see, I've got a spot here where the petal is leaning right up against that bud right there. So I'm going to get that nice and dark right there. They're touching their brands. Like that. Okay. And that'll give us, I'm going to hold the brush down a little bit and use just the tip straight up and down to get these teensy, itsy, bitsy little fan marks where the petal is curled up, 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 like that. And do the same thing over here where the petal is curled this way, like that. We've got a couple lines coming down like this. And come over here. This spot dark right there. And I think that's enough for that petal. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to get some more color and I'm going to come over to this petal. <coughs> it swoops down. And there's a little Sweep out that way, and then swoops down and down like that. Because this one's arching out, so you want that that to feel like it's going out and down and around like that. And then all of these need to have that sweeping. And then they start to fan, get small and fan this way, holding the brush way too far, way too close to the top to get my, my light lines. Quick, 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 because then you're not as worried about getting it just so. Cute little, like that. Ow, that was my ankle. <laughs> I don't need it, it's fine. I have another one on the other side. Nice little shadow there, and then this one can come down here, like that. We have a couple folds in our petal.
I have some more paint. And some dark bold lines down there. Like that. And I want one more bit bold right here. Like that, yeah. <coughs> Dig it. Out of these. We're going in that direction. Out that way. And this one, not that way, gently. This guy is coming down this way. Good. I'm kind of digging it. Anybody else? Alright. I'm going to come down here and work on these guys. Do the same thing, just pick where you want your, I've got a fold here, so we need to be mindful of that, and come up and around, comes down and around and into that fold, and then this tip is pretty dark right here. And then underside of our petal gently along the edge and I'm going to dry off that a little bit and use a little, little dryer brush. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and go all the way around the top of where that petal folds there. This line here, right there, good. We got a little fold out here. We got a little fold out there. A little fold action happening over here. This one's folded in as well, right here. A little ridge right up into there and all along the edge of this fold. There's the edge. And then we can come in and give some little lines indicating what way that's rolling. Up, up, up. And this one too. Rolling up, up, up. Like that. Maybe one or two actual full, full lines like that. And then come back in here. A little, little dark on there. It's not bad, right? Pure ultramarine. Come down on this one. Get just a couple of very bold lines like that. Just a couple. And same thing on this one. Just this center area. Do I want to have that bolder ultramarine color? Right there. Good. And then down here, same thing. A little bolder ultramarine color in that shadow area. Through there. And then this guy gets the same treatment. Grab your shadow color. And come in there and get in all your little shadow lines. Well, don't forget about your little bits of rolled petal down here. On that back edge. And then your little lines. 
up, up, up. Back edge of this petal. Up, up, up. Like that. I want to take a little bit of pure ultra. Oh no, I want my shadow color. That's wrong. I want my shadow color. I'll come on this petal, this bud right here. Do a little, just a few little interesting lines and shapes. It doesn't need to be perfect. Like that. To make it look like the flower is rolled and wrapped. And um, I think I'm going to blot that. I like that little starburst of light. Just incorporate it a bit. Like that. There we go. We've got some petals rolling around on each other. Nice. Okay. Now we need our light colors. Our light, light blue. Our nice light blue. Mixed with our light ultra. Together. And then come up here. And get in our... Gentle little areas of shadow like that. Incorporate this petal in here now that this is dry. Make it pretty. Let the colors bleed around a little bit. Carried away. Don't want to get too carried away. Okay, I'm going to take my light color and come up here and give this a little wash right over the top to incorporate all of those textures gentle little skimming of the light blue over the top of everything and it will pull it all together. See? Pulls all those marks that we made together like that. But it still leaves enough interest. If you don't like that, which I'm thinking I might want to put in a little ultramarine in the dark. In some areas here. There. And maybe a little bit right here. Gently. Maybe a bit right here. not too dark because it's a very light colored flower petals up here. So don't get too crazy with outlining, right? Well, we can drop in a little bit of a little bit of dark right here. Right there. And it gives the effect of um, the ruffles on the tips of your your flower where they overlay each other. 
where there's a bit of shadow going out like that. Not, not too much, but enough to separate the colors. And if you get it too dark, just block, remember. There we go. This one out here is pretty dark. We're going to let it be dark. So that it pushes this petal forward. And if it's not dark enough, we can put a little bit of that purple color on it and turn it into a bud in the background. Like this bud down here. Maybe we'll do a little more darker purple on the bottom of it. Like that. Pull it up gently. There we go. And this one we can actually come in here and dry on wet or dry wet paint on dry paper. Gives you a bit more control. Wet and wet is so fun, but when you need that control, this is the way to go. Let me get a little bit of what do you call it? Um, drama. A little bit of drama through here. A little bit of bold drama. I dig it. I like it. I'm going to do it down here too. Because this is underneath this, so it's in shadow, so it wouldn't be that bright anyways. So we can make that nice and dark. With our brush. Let's see what else do we want to do here. Now I've got we've got some some soft browns in, in our yellows. So I'm gonna grab this yellow ochre, mix it with my orange. Maybe a touch of the burnt sienna. Mix it up here with my orange color. Orange and yellow that we used already. A little bit of this to make our brown. This is for our crepe paper look up here. And come in here and oh, too dark. Too much water. That's okay. Blah blah blah. And get in here and get this in here. Get our Kind of tiger stripe textures going up like this in our yellow area. Back at this petal right here. It's very veiny and textured in the yellow. Bleeding up into the blue yellow up here situation. We've got a couple little dark spots up here. Then we can come in and do some super light like that. With tiger stripes. That's what I'm thinking of. Throw them in and see how it looks when we're done. Why not? A little bit of shadowing over here. Pull it that way. Get these guys shadowed in right here. Pull it down. It's starting to come together, right? You don't have to get this te te technical about it either. You can. Um, And this guy's right there. 
And down here on this one, this is that cray papery, highly textured, little bit of where the leaf and petal come up on this guy, there, there. And give it some texture on top. Like that. Do a little, little skimming like that. I like it. A little more here. Now, I'm going to take my purple color. I'm going to get in a couple of really dark shadows in here. Here. And then here. There. Some of that cray papery texture line stuff going on. See, here's here's where I get lost in details, and you do not have to do all this if you like your painting the way it is at this point. You can stop. You can get in with colored pencils and really refine all your petals and make it make it your own. Um, I'm gonna come down here with my brown orange color and do see these these brown orange colors up here we're going to do the same thing down here and incorporate our petal into our stem like this get some of those fine texture lines right there couple of lines going up like that and into our stem down here stem frame okay I'm gonna forget our crepe papery situation on this stem like that and just give it a That action kind of little dry brush technique. It's a little too dark, just blot. Trying to get Yeah, I think that's pretty. Okay, digging it. So, like I did up here with the oop, got a little splotch of purple on there. With the purple. It's one of the risks of having your water up over your art. I don't generally do that, but um, this big palette doesn't lend me to having it directly off the side like I like. And then we're going to come in here, and underneath these petals is pretty dark, so I'm going to go ahead and be bold. And then right through here is dark. I'm using my purple like I would use a black because it is, as you can see up here, more than dark enough to get in those textures and techniques and lines. Once again, if you don't like this part, don't do not do this part. If this isn't calling to you, make your flower your own. Do that. Come in here. Get in this bit here that's a little dark. Grab some of that brown and put that in there. And this is all textured like that. 
comes around and down. Good. Good, good, good. And the back of this petal underneath is pretty dark as well. Into there. There we go. I like it. Okay. Now, at this point, you can stop painting and get in here with any other medium to make your flower your own. Um, I'm going to use some dry brush techniques. Get in some bits of textures. Pull that guy up a bit. There we go. Good. I take that up. Now I want to work a little more on my petals and then I'm going to call it done. So my light, light color, I want to do a glaze over top of this whole petal. Glaze right there. And a glaze, I mean, I'm putting a very thin, thin layer of blue over the blue that I already have down. And that helps pull all those background colors and all the colors we already put down together. And I like the textures on that one. There we go. Then I want to take my ultramarine, the dark one. bit. Come up here and get in some shadows. Pull them down. Remember direction matters so that you can tell what way your petals flowing. Right? You want to know which way it's going. Pretty. Got this. This is just a bit dark. I'm going to put the brush over the top of it, kind of soften it and pull it out like that. Come around here. Get that fold down. Good. Don't forget about all these little interesting tigery lines. And you can put in as little or as many as you want. Just a touch right there. And you can also stop at any point and come back to it tomorrow and see what you do and don't like, where you want to fix it or not. Um, there. I think I'd like to drag a little blue down, down, down. 
onto that yellow petal and incorporate it a bit more like that. Okay, I'm going to call this 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 flower done. I'm going to come down here and work on this petal for a minute. And we're done. We're going to take our tape off and see how it looks. I want to get in. There's a fold on this one. And there's this one that's out here. Sweeping in. Oops. Got a little bit more blue there than I wanted to. I do have other tissues I could grab a new one. I don't want that a little bit. We'll grab our, our blues and get our little bits of color and texture coming down on this wavy guy as well. And he's coming in and down. And then there's a little loop there. And we've got a little bit there. Swooping there. Just because there are so many textures happening. Unless you're going for like hyper realism, which I am not. I don't know that I have the patience to do that for a video. Um, I mean, I would if someone was interested. I would totally go down the hyper realism road and teach you how to do this in a super realistic way. Um, it's not how I normally work anyways, um, but if that is something that someone would be interested in learning, I can do that. And I need my more dark ultra. Okay, let's see. I don't want to get too carried away. This one's starting to look a little muddy. Right? It might be time to let it be, right? A little bit dark there. This one. bit like that. This one kind of got away from me a little bit too. That's all right. All right. I think I'm done. What do you guys think? I'm wondering if I shouldn't do something different to the background, but let's take our tape off first and see what it looks like. Or should we? Should we do something to the background? Let me. Not today. I may come in with pastel later, like a pale, my pale pink pan pastel, and soften, super soften the. Um... Oh man, I got this taped down good. <laughs> I did not want it to move. Let's like that come out this way. Okay, there's that side. And then pull this side off. Yeah, I got way carried away with the tape for this, but that's all right. We can just Gently, hopefully, pull that corner off. There we go. 
And then, let's see if I can get this right off. Ta-da! There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And actually, I'm, now that the, it always happens, now that the frame is there, I like the piece kind of a lot. Yeah, I dig it. Alright, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below if you like this tutorial or not, or what or what. Did you paint along? I'd love to see your work. Um, and, uh, yeah. Don't forget to feed the algorithm animal with the thumbs up and subscribing and commenting and all the things. Helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!